Hello and welcome, my name is Meepolis, they, he, she, and today's picks are Photo Booth, a biography, and Long Hair, a graphic memoir, both by Meg Fitzgerald, published in 2014 and 2015, respectively, by Conundrum Press. Although, due to my own ill planning, I read them in reverse. Content notes for Dash of Nudity and Angst About One's Sexuality. And while these both are memoirs, some aspects of Meg Fitzgerald that are also worth highlighting are she is from Montreal and also does improv comedy, animation, Ariel Silk Trapeze, and she's a drag king named Hercule Slees. Megs has also illustrated a teen nonfiction book entitled My Body, My Choice, The Fight for Abortion Rights by Robin Stevenson, which also sounds pretty cool. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this a duology? Photography, so-called low art, self-discovery, travel, and community. The summary for photo booth is, quote, For almost a century, chemical photo booths have occupied public spaces, giving people the opportunity to quickly take inexpensive quality photos. In the last decade, these machines have started to rapidly disappear, causing an eclectic group of individuals from around the world to come together and respond. Illustrator, writer, and longtime photo booth lover, Megs Fitzgerald has chronicled this movement and the photo booth's fortuitous history in a graphic novel. Having traveled in North America, Europe, and Australia, she's constructed a biography of the booth through the eyes of technicians, owners, collectors, artists, and fanatics. Fitzgerald explores her own struggles with her relationships to these fleeting machines while looking to the future. End quote. The summary for Long Red Hair is, quote, In this graphic memoir, Fitzgerald paints a lively childhood full of sleepovers, amateur fortune telling, and watching scary movies. Yet Fitzgerald suspects that she is unlike her friends. She initially takes us from her first kiss to a life sworn off romance. Long Red Hair alluringly delves into the mystique of sorcery and sisterhood. Comparing and contrasting the art in the two volumes, I'm always a fan of the watercolor look. The anything but black and white, yet still very limited color palette of long red hair was very interesting and expressive. Writing-wise, I will be honest and say that photo booth was a bit much for me. Wrapping up in a substantial 277 pages, I will admit my eyes glazed over from time to time as Megs dove incredibly deep into a very thorough timeline of photo booths. And while I can appreciate and relate to hyperfixating on something very niche, for better or for worse, I don't have much patience for other people's info dumping. <laughs> that said, I did appreciate learning more about how photo booths served couples, etc. that would have faced discrimination and hate if they showed up at a photo studio. It was also very cool to see all the super creative art that people made using photo booths. Plus, it helped that I did find Megs to be a pretty interesting character and the personal vignettes she shares to be very intriguing. Particularly in long red hair, there's a lot more showing rather than telling. Looking at the intersections and identities that I dig into in each of my reviews, sexuality felt fairly central to both volumes because besides photo boost, it was one of the things that Megs seemed to be wrestling with the most. I will flag that in Long Red Hair, there is a page where Megs is angsting a lot about being bisexual and she reiterates some silly tropes about bisexuality. At the end, Megs does note that this was just how she felt at the time and not meant to be a definitive explanation of bisexuality, which is good because it would have been a bad one. That said, she now just identifies as queer. I was more interested in Megs' struggle with if she actually wanted to be in a relationship with anyone at all. As far as gender went, I would say that the majority of exploration went into Megs' connection with femininity and the sisterhood. It would be really coolio, though, if Megs' next book talked a bit about her experience as a drag king. Just saying. Class, while not described in a class-conscious way, if that's the best term, I don't know, is at play in how Megs' life plays out, and she does highlight it throughout. Though she is also extremely lucky. <laughs> and as always, because I've had a bit of a lag between reading and reviewing, I don't remember anything disability-related being highlighted, but I could be wrong. Wrapping things up, I suppose I would rate Photo Booth 3 stars and Long Red Hair 4 stars? What do you think? Bye y'all, keep reading, and stand with striking workers. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, an Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.